I have found a way to bring macOS keyboard shortcuts to Tmux. So if you're familiar with macOS keyboard shortcuts, uh, everything is driven by the command key. So that's, for me, that's here. Uh, so in Safari, you're probably used to command T for new tab, command W to close the tab, command N to open up a new window, um, and even things like uh, command uh, angle bracket to switch between tabs. And of course, these things work just as well in Finder. Command T will create a new tab. And so we're familiar with these. If you're a Mac user, this is probably the things you're most comfortable with when you're using the keyboard. But when we're in something like a terminal multiplexer, so this is a tool called Tmux, it is driven by the command line. And so there is no way to use the command key um, because these types of tools aren't built with the command key in mind. Um, and so Tmux specifically, if we man Tmux, uh, you'll see that there are lots of key bindings that we can fork from. So these, of course, are the defaults. And everything is combined with a prefix, which the default is control B. And then you follow it by a letter. And this letter will let you do a command. So something we're familiar with, just like the new tabs, um, Tmux has these things up here called windows. And so if you do command uh, control B and then C, we'll create a new window. And if we do control B X, we can close that window. But the question is now, can we do something like that with the command key? And the short answer is yes. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to decide on what keyboard shortcut we want to do. And then we're going to get a hex code. I'll show you how that's, how that's done. And that just gives us an interpretation of the key. And then we're going to use a terminal uh, emulator called Alacrity to bind that hex code to the keyboard shortcut that we want. And so let's just go with the example that I've been saying here so far. It's this control or command T would give us a new tab. And so if we want to do that command T, right, it's new tab. Then in here, uh, again, so that's step one. So the step one is we want new window, which is control B C to be mapped to command T. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called XXD. Now, X, uh, XXD is just something that allows us to dump hex codes. So what we'll do is we will we will run XXD.ps, um, and this will listen to our keyboard. So this is going to put me into that mode. Um, and actually, we need to do it outside of Tmux because it's going to start to complain. So we'll do xxd.ps. And now I will do control B and then C. And to get the hex code dumped, I have to also hit the enter key. And so that gives me this code, 02630A. Um, I'm going to hit control C to cancel out of that because I don't need it running anymore. And so now we have our code. And this is, this is the hex code. Um, so these are separated by two characters each. So 0, 2 is our control B prefix. 6, 3 is the letter C as a hex code. And then 0, A is the enter key. So we know we're not going to use the enter key. It's not necessary. So we'll drop that. Um, and so now it leaves us with uh, 0, 2, 6, 3. All right. And it's not too complicated. There's just one more step now. Um, Alacrity, which if you don't already use this, you're going to have to download it um, and get it set up. But Alacrity is a fast cross-platform OpenGL terminal emulator. So it's just another terminal emulator, just like Hyper and Kitty and um, the terminal app that's built into macOS. Um, it is quite a bit faster, in my opinion. It uses the GPU um, to sort of render the text. So it makes it very quick and fast. Um, and if you noticed on mine, I don't have any commands. And I have this um, 
see-through kind of transparent look, um, which we can talk about in another video. Um, but basically, the way that this is configured is in our dot files. And so if you go to your home directory, so this is my home directory, um, under the dot config folder, there is going, you're going to create one called Alacrity, and inside that create a alacrity.yaml file. So this is the configuration file. Um, you can see down here that they talk about it. There's lots of places you can put it. You can also have it in the home directory as the dot alacrity.yaml. Um, but the important part is going to be this key bindings thing right here. And so what we have to do is we want to bind, um, we want to bind command T. So the key is, uh, the first key is called T key and um, the second key is mods. So we're going to use the command mod and then the car, the characters, this char's uh, key uh, gives us our, wants us to put in our hex code. And so we know that that's this value here. Right and zero A is the enter key, so we don't need that. Um, and then Alacrity specifically wants us to escape the hex codes, so we're just going to use a backslash X before each of the characters, and that's it. We make sure to add a comma at the end to make it valid, or not a comma, a curly break bracket, um, and that will help us create a new window. And Alacrity already knows that the file has been updated, so you should just be able to immediately, if you're inside of a Tmux, hit Command T to create a new tab. And really, that's it. Uh, we can repeat those steps for all of the keyboard shortcuts that we think are useful. Um, I can go through each one and just tell you what I'm using. Um, and so. If we take a look here at man tmux, we know that there's lots of keyboard shortcuts to work with. And so what I'm going to do for the most part is just get the hex code for the prefix and then any one of these characters. And then I can map it to whatever uh, mappings that I want it to have. Um, so in the blog post, I've listed all the ones that I'm using right now. Um, and here you'll see some more that aren't all related to Tmux, um, but things like command comma will let me rename this, so I can rename the tab up here if I want to do that. Um, if I do command D, um, it opens up lazy docker, which is just a command line tool I use. Um, command F, uh, this one isn't Tmux specifically, it actually types out LFCD and hits the enter key. And for me, um, it pops up this tool called LF, which is how I navigate my files when I'm inside the command line. Um, command G gets me to uh, my git terminal UI quickly. Um, command K is on the home row, and so it just lets me switch between Tmux sessions. So I can just hit a number and switch, hit a number and switch, hit a number and switch. Um, and then even more so, if I have multiple tabs open, um, in Safari we're used to Command 1 being the first tab, Command 2 being the second tab, Command 3 being the third tab. Um, and so that is something I like to bring over to Tmux. And thankfully, uh, my windows are numbered already. So literally, I just hit Command 1, it goes to the first one. Command 3 goes to Command 3. Uh, so that's really helpful. Um, one thing to note is that it is important. Tmux um, has a configuration file for the index. Uh, I like to do the base index of z one um, and the pane base index of one because I don't like it starting at zero. It doesn't really make sense, especially in this scenario, to have the first one be the the letter zero. That's sort of on the opposite end. Um, but I don't use that all the time. But it is useful when I am thinking about it. Um, and now I'm going to sort of break away from the Mac OS standards. Um, so if you're used to Command L, you, if you don't know, it's a great one. It focuses the window up here. So this is a focus. 
but there really is no bar or it's not something that I go to regularly in TMUX. So I've just decided to bind it to the prefix uh, capital L, which is to switch between the last session I used. So if I go to my jam session and then I go to my dot file session, right? I can just hit command L to switch between them. It's very, very fast. And if I want to just do some task switching, I want to jump to my dot files, make a change. I know that I can just hit command L to go right back to the project that I was working on before. So that's a really great one. I use it all the time. Um, in fact, let's use it now. Um, and then finally, we mentioned earlier in the video, the command brackets to switch between tabs. And so hopefully you're used to that one. If not, I would recommend using that one. Um, I'm doing the same thing here. So it's prefix in to go to the next and prefix P to go to the previous. But now I can just do command bracket to switch between them. And that one's really helpful. And this one I probably use the most because um, I'm just so used to it. The muscle memory is already there. Um, and this one's a recent addition to me. Uh, if I am using a window manager, which I can link to uh, another video once I have it up about how to use this window manager called Yabai. Um, so if you do a new window, it actually creates this tiling effect. And so I'm doing the same thing inside of Tmux. If I hit um, command in, it creates a new pane. And so I'll show you what that means. So if I do that, it creates a new pane. And then if I do the shift in, it will create the pane in the opposite direction. So it'll split it left and right. And that goes a long way because right now the default is prefix double quote uh, and prefix percentage, which is not really intuitive and it's not easy to reach because neither character is obvious. Um, and then the next one is command Q. So command Q just quits Tmux. I'm not truly killing it. I'm just detaching from it. So if I know that I want to get out of Tmux, I never really choose to ever quit Tmux. It's not something that I need to do. And so this is just a great way to get out of it if I need to do something like the XXD command, right? As mentioned before, this has to be done outside of Tmux. Um, so that's that. We can reconnect and uh, this one's interesting. So command S, most people know this one in Word documents and all sorts of other applications for save. And so I've also bound it to save. Um, and in Vim, it's uh, colon W and then enter. Um, and so I can even be in insert mode. And what it'll do is it'll pass escape first. That's the one B. And so I can just hit command S and it saves the file and puts me back into normal mode. Uh, command semicolon gets puts me into this Tmux mode where I can set things and I can you know deal with Tmux commands. It's sort of like X mode for Tmux, right? Just like uh, Vim's uh, X mode. Uh, it's sort of the same thing. And so it's useful sometimes. I don't use it much. Um, of course, we've talked about T which is pretty great. Um, and then in here, let me show you this one. So if I notice that I, I can add secondary modifiers, so in this case, shift. So if I do command shift T, we're gonna just echo high. So I can take this pane, right? There's two panes here. And when I do command shift T, it's going to take the pane that I'm looking at now, this one, it's going to detach it and put it in its own window. So now it's in a new window, but I still have that high. And if we go back, we'll see that that second pane isn't there anymore. Uh, this can be really useful if I'm starting up a project. I might, uh, let's see, let's go back to this. I might um, have like a compiler running and then I might start coding. And if I don't want it to stay here, I can just hit command shift T and it splits it out into its own thing. Um, and then finally, command W, hopefully everybody knows this keyboard shortcut already. It's to close windows. So if I'm here, I can hit command W to close, 
command W to close. And so the exact same thing works here. It closes a pane, and if it's the last pane, it closes the window. So if I have a new second pane, if I hit W, it closes that. And then if I hit it again, it closes that one as well. Um, so that one can be very helpful. Um, we'll open that back up. And then finally, I have Command Z. Um, Command Z is pretty great. We had talked about earlier if I have um, like the Vim open in one pane and the compiler open in another, um, prefix C lets me zoom into the pane. So this is the pane I'm using. I can zoom into it um, and then I can hit it again to reverse it. And you'll notice up here um, that there is a Z that shows up in the window title and that tells me that it's currently zoomed. I think of it like zoomed, zoomed in. Um, but prefix Z is kind of a pain, so I just have command Z because I'm not really going to worry about undo. Um, and so you can see that I zoom in, zoom out, and I can go up to this one. I can zoom in and then zoom back out. Um, and so I have found this to be invaluable. It is so helpful to me to be able to um, find these keyboard shortcuts because again the muscle memory of it all I just it's just so easy to remember um, because I've been using the same keyboard shortcuts for so long now um, and these generally some of these are new some of these I haven't been using a lot but I have found that I very quickly adapt to it because um, there's not very many right if we look at this there's maybe 30 or less and remember 1 through 10 is this 1 through 9 is you know, basically the same thing. So maybe 20 keyboard shortcuts. Um, but what's great about this is I can compose this and I can do more um, than just Tmux commands, like the the saving command S. That one was cool. So again, it's escape 1B, colon 3A, W77, and then enter 0A. Um, and so you just compose these. You might want to add comments so that you know what it is um, but yeah I hope this was helpful and I hope that you learned something from it and feel free to share with me uh, on the blog post feel free to share your ideas um, what keyboard shortcuts are working for you um, and thanks for watching